Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 61 of the Juvo Hub podcast. Today, we are talking about workplace stress and memory issues. I'm your host. My name is Jonathan Saar. And with me today, back in action, Mark Howell from Howell Creative Concepts. How are you, man? I'm great, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. I love it. Yes. Yes. This is always a highlight of my day, my week. (laughs) <laughs> to be able to get on here and talk about these subjects. And this one's a really, really important one too. It, it showed up in my LinkedIn feed. I had never really given it a whole lot of consideration. I'll definitely put the link in the show notes for, for everyone to read. But it, it talked about the stress that we've been under and be, you know, from the pandemic and everything that's kind of like related to that. And that that level of stress has contributed to memory issues. You know, it doesn't matter how old we are. So I'll put that to you, Mark. I mean, is that something that, that you've heard from other people, noticed maybe within yourself or like, what have you, what's the landscape been like um, in general on this topic? Yeah, well, well, forgetfulness, yes, comes up a lot in my world as I've gotten older. And I'm not sure if that's an old age thing or if it is industry related, work related. Um, But I, you know, look, I think you and I both, we come in contact with so many people in an event, at an event, or in our careers. Names are really difficult for me. I typically don't forget faces, but I try to always tell people, especially if they're in a large group, I'll say, you know, look, guys, I may not always remember your names, um, but just come and tell me where we were together. And then that will jog my memory. I always try to, first of all, forewarn a larger audience that I have the potential of seeing again um, to to forewarn them of that. Because, you know, I, I think it's there's this crazy expectation that we're supposed to remember everyone and everyone's name and where we've met them and I know for me, it's impossible. I just can't. My brain doesn't hold that much data, I guess. Uh, But yes, I think that as we have gotten busier, um, it is a a problem. Just how do we teach ourselves little tricks or tips to remember things to release stress? Because I also think that affects our memory. It affects how our brain works when we feel stressed out. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And for this podcast, you know, we're neither you or I are neuroscientists and, and do not have a degree in, in, in brain chemistry, surgery, or anything related to that. Uh, however, this is uh, just a common item. And I just, again, I found that article very uh, eye opening and, and a good, and anyway, I had forgotten about it. You know, I didn't even think that that was something that should be addressed as a, as a professional. And so that's why we have it on the podcast, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone out there. Uh, we wanted to you know, bring this to everyone's attention and get your feedback on what are, what, what are your tips for dealing with uh, forgetfulness? You know, I, I remember, and it, you know, there's certain things you can laugh at. Uh, the beginning of the year it was like insanely busy with just multiple projects going on at one time. And like all of us, we get, we get tired. And I remember just being so just like, you're going through your head. It's like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. So I got a, my, my, I have this, this uh, canteen people on YouTube. You can see it here. It's just a water canteen that I, I use throughout the day. And I wanted to fill it up. And instead of going to the refrigerator, I went to the front door and I <laughs> not kidding you. I put the, this, this canteen against the door, you know, <laughs> and whether you want to call that forgetfulness or just being exhausted, you know, it was funny, but that's what this, uh, this little study, you know, triggered in my mind, like, okay, how many things have I forgotten to do? Like, I can't find my, keys or I can't find my phone. Uh, you know, so it's, this is what this is for. Think back. Uh, what's your, what's your routine right now? And do you see a pattern where 
you're starting to forget more things and understand where it's coming from. And let's share with each other some some little tips that uh, could help uh, minimize that impact. You know. Yeah, I like that story. You know, it's funny. You don't know how many times I found my keys in the refrigerator, in the milk, in the pantry. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> what's what's happening here? You know. Um, so, woo, I think that it's valuable for us to, when you're in those types of situations, to recognize that and ask yourself. Why is this happening? Am I trying to do too much at this particular time in my life? You know, today, meaning it's three o'clock and you're standing at the front door waiting for it to give you water. Like what else was happening in that day that might have over overwhelmed your circuitry, you know, up there, like the circuits are starting to malfunction. And um, I think it's, it's valuable to say, okay, this is where and why I am where I am. Um, because I, I'm trying to do too much and start evaluating that. It kind of goes into the fundamentals of time management, right? Or making to-do lists, helping your brain understand exactly what it needs to do or what it needs to stay focused on to me is invaluable. Um, if I know I have a busy day, I have to write everything down. I'm so thankful for this device right here that yeah. puts all of my, it's a calendar now that um, it helps keep me scheduled. Could you imagine, you remember back in the day when we had those big, huge, like 10 by 10, um, paper calendars we put on our desks yep. and we wrote on them. Could you imagine me walking around with that all day? Um, so it's using technology that can help you organize your life, finding ways to, uh, play little games about memory. But for me, one of the most important things that you can understand about yourself is, at what times of the day are you most valuable? Um, I call this your circadian rhythm. If you'd ever do research yep. about the circadian rhythm, it's when your internal clock is at its best and when, it, when it's at its weakest, only you can determine that. So when are you at your sharpest? Try to do some of the things that are more important when you are truly at your sharpest. But knowing your circadian rhythm is very valuable. Yeah, no, that's cool. I forgot, I forgot about that thing, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and I think for our industry in particular, just think of the episode that we just had previous to this one, talking about uh, the amount of work that we're involved in. And so now we're looking at some intriguing factors on this show, stress, fatigue, and being able to remember what should be basic things that we normally do. And I connect this with the amount of compliance requirements that we have in our industry. And maybe you're fairly new to fair housing and it, it's not like, you're not like a 30 year veteran where it's like, it's totally ingrained, but you're an overworked uh, younger professional. There's, you, you can't afford to forget those things. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, and so that's where I think um, I like your tip. I think we, we need to continue to do more work to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, mm-hmm. taking care of our mental health, taking care of our emotional health. And as leaders, making sure that we look at our team and understand that there's more to life than just work. There's so many other contributing factors because you could easily say, well, their job's not that strong not that difficult. It's not that stressful, but that's just one part of all of our lives. There are so many things that are going on that are contributing to that stress. Could be family issues, could be health issues, could be economic issues. And and all those things are going through our mind and contributing to a potential pattern of forgetfulness. So that's, I'm going to, you know, step back towards being aware will help move things forward and and hopefully make some changes. Um, I like your tip too, Mark, about, you know, when you're within a group of people. So do you do any certain things like when you meet, when you've met a group for a first time and you said you recognize faces or anything that like, what does it, what helps you uh, like recognize them? Do you do anything like in, in your head? Like, okay, 
I, I no, do. <laughs> I sometimes have to. I do this with some of my neighbors in the neighborhood. I, I'll give you a funny little story. So there was a um, neighbor that I was meeting, well, not only for the first time, but actually for the second and third time, and I couldn't remember their names. And so as I was standing there, I related them to either characters in a movie that they reminded me of or somebody that I knew I, I, I sort of there was this guy David that I used to work with a little wiry like real firecracker just talkative just constantly moving and um, the neighbors kind of like that and so I knew like I just related him to the old David that I I remembered their personalities and mannerisms being the same and his wife is Sandy and I thought of Sandy from Greece because she did something from the movie but for me I love I love movies I love that type of of reality or or false reality whatever but um so it's easy for my brain to associate people with that type of um, character or memory, um, or if I can't really uh, align them with the character from a movie, I'll look at something about either their clothing or their personality and try to remember something that was interesting or quirky about it. And when I do that, it sort of, for some reason, does stick in my brain. And so the next time I see them, I usually can say, hey, how was, you know, this person that we were talking about in our last conversation, my brain remembers, like, remember, she was the quirky one that was talking about her husband or her dog or whatever, or a problem. Um, I also try to look at people's maybe emotional state where they are. And um, sometimes it, I, I remember comments that they made and that's how I can remember who they are. But so recently when I was in a group of 30 people and was going to spend a lot of time with with these people, with the CAM class, I had to tell them, you know, guys, I do come in contact with a lot of people uh, in my career and names sometimes do get a little lost. So please, when you come up to me in the future, just remind me how we met each other. I will never forget your face, but I sort of now I own it. I own when I'm going to make that mistake mistake. And I've never been great with names, but um, I do try, try really hard to play those kind of games and, and association games with myself. But I also, I'm just really honest with people and I'll say, you know what, I don't always remember names, but I'm really great with faces. Yeah. Um, so I just, it's honesty. Yeah, no, that's good. I love the word association. That, that's really cool. And I, there was one other little tip in this article that resonated with me and I'm like, okay, I, I kind of already do this. So here's the steps that I take. You know, I never book back-to-back -back meetings, never, as much as possible. And there's the rare occasion where there's just so many things going on. People are trying to squeeze stuff in and I'll, and I'll obviously acquiesce to help them out. But in general, it's like if I have a one o'clock meeting, it on, and you can do this with Google Calendar. I'm sure you can do it with other calendars also. It's defaults to 50 minutes. It doesn't default to to one to uh, to one hour. So if someone wants to book one o'clock, it automatically books it from one to one fifty. Yeah, because um, you know on my smartwatch I got a Fitbit. What happens at the top of every hour? It's telling me to get up, and I <laughs> as much as I can, I I do that. You know, so you guys have seen it on the show. I got an Australian cattle dog. He loves being outside. And so I, it's, he, he forces it on me too, which is great. But I love the fact that I can, I stop for about 10 minutes, just go outside, take a little break, clean up the brain a little bit, and then go back at it. And it, and it's been so beneficial to me. I'm so glad that I made that change as opposed to just, you know, back to back to back. So now it's like, that's part of my programming is to just to make sure I take these little micro breaks throughout the day in order to help kind of assimilate what I just did in that meeting or whatever project that I was involved in. So, yeah, that's great. It's great advice. Yeah. So we'd love everyone's advice. Like if you have any, any tips, please, uh, please share them with us. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback on, you know, what's been helping you. But uh, as we said at the outset, the purpose of this podcast was just 
uh, awareness that it's there. And as leaders to be aware of where, how it could be affecting your team's um, overall performance and their efficiency. So be aware of it and do all that you can to, to help them out. So thank you for everyone for being on the show. Again, we love your support. Thank you for giving us uh, reviews on your favorite podcast station and your comments on our YouTube channel. We, we really appreciate it. Make sure you've signed up for our newsletter. You can go to juvohub.com slash newsletter and you'll be able to sign up for that. And that way you won't miss out on anything at all. So thanks again, Mark, for being on the show. We'll see you next time. Class dismissed. Bye-bye.